You want to pack more crops into the space you have. Well, containers of all shapes and sizes are a fantastic and often highly attractive way of doing it. Here are four projects that are big on taste and style. Hi, I'm Ben Van Heems, editor of GrowVeg.com, and on this channel we share the very best tips for an easy, productive vegetable garden. OK, so let's roll up our sleeves and get planting. Let's begin with this simple project that transforms a handsome old wicker basket into a salad bar positively bursting with greens. Start by lining the basket with any porous membrane, like this weed control fabric, that keeps the potting mix in but lets excess moisture drain through. Next, fill the basket with potting mix, crumbling up the final layer to give a good, even texture. And because salads are shallow rooted, you can reuse some of last year's used potting mix at the bottom to save a little money. Right, we're ready for the seeds. We're using a cut and come again salad leaf mix to give a variety of leaf textures and flavours. Sow the seeds nice and evenly across the surface by dropping pinches of seeds a couple of inches above the surface like this. Then it's just a matter of covering them over with more potting mix, tamping it down and watering thoroughly. Place the basket in a warm location with plenty of light and keep the potting mix damp but not soggy. Three weeks on and the seedlings are well on their way. They'll be ready to pick in just another couple of weeks. Keep your basket outside or on a sunny windowsill, picking individual leaves as soon as they reach a usable size. You could also use baskets like this to grow a tasty crop of finger-sized salad carrots. I absolutely love pea shoots. They're the epitome of fresh and one of the very quickest salads you can grow with the first cut ready within just three weeks from sowing. If you've never tried pea shoots before, please do because they actually do have a superbly fresh pea taste. Now, shallow trays like these, this is an old mushroom tray, are perfect for growing pea shoots in because they don't have a very deep root run. First off, line the tray with more of that weed fabric. Be sure to push it right into the sides and corners, then fill with potting mix. Once you're done, trim off any excess fabric flush with the tray to keep things tidy. You can jumpstart germination by soaking the pea seeds overnight in lukewarm water. And don't waste money on expensive seed packets. These ones here are just the dried peas sold in the grocery store. The swollen seeds can now be scattered across the soil surface before covering them over with a half inch or one centimetre layer of the potting mix. Give it all a good water, then move to a bright warm place to germinate and grow. Cut the shoots just above their lowest leaves to encourage the plant to reshoot and give a second cut. You really can't beat fresh pea shoots. Try them on salads, but also scattered onto soups or folded into risottos. Right, I fancy some strawberries for dessert. This sweet and succulent strawberry tower uses three terracotta pots secured by a central bamboo cane. The widest pot, at 14 inches or 35 centimetres diameter, forms the base of our tower. Fill it with potting mix, leaving space at the top for your strawberry plants. Now thread the medium pot. This one has a diameter of 10 inches or 25 centimetres onto the bamboo cane through its central drainage hole. Push this down into the pot below and fill with potting mix. Repeat with the smallest pot. Ours is 6 inches or 15 centimetres wide. Now to plant. This strawberry tower uses a total of 11 strawberry plants. 5 in the bottom pot, 4 in the middle and 2 at the top. Take care to plant them at the correct depth. Filling in with more potting mix so that the crown of the plant, that's where the stems emerge, sits level with the surface. Water the plants regularly and feed with a high potassium fertiliser such as a liquid tomato feed to encourage lots of fruits. Cut off any runners like this in the first year to keep plants compact and bushy. 
In subsequent years, you can route the runners to make more plants for free. Now how about this handsome repurposed palette? It's a great way to display a selection of herbs to pick whenever they're needed. As a keen cook myself, I love to have fresh herbs to hand. They not only taste amazing, they also save a fair amount of money on those rather mean packets of herbs you can buy. Basil's my favourite, and you'll find out more about how to grow basil and how to make your own pesto in our book, but more on that in a minute. To create slightly deeper planting pockets, you'll first need to detach three boards from another pallet to add to this one. Nailing the extra boards to the pallet then doubles the depth of our three planting pockets. All secured into place, the pallet can then be given a waterproof coat of outdoor paint. Chalking on the names of herbs is a nice touch. Paint on a couple of layers of chalkboard paint, having marked out the position of each chalkboard panel with masking tape. Once dried, it's on with the planting pockets, and for these, a durable landscape fabric is best. Cut the fabric to fit, then staple it neatly to the back of the pallet, along the sides and flat along the front. Fold in the edges of the fabric to give clean lines and to stop the edges from fraying. And there we have our pallet planter ready for its herbs. I chose a mixture of grocery store and garden centre bought herbs, including basil, rosemary, sage and parsley. The final job, in neater handwriting than mine, is to chalk up the names of the herbs. Keep your herbs watered and pick them often to keep them bushy and productive. If you'd like to try out more projects like this, you'll love our new book, Grow Veg, The Beginner's Guide to Easy Vegetable Gardening. Now at the start of the season, it's often a bit tricky to come up with new ideas, things you want to shake things up a bit for the new growing season. And that was kind of the idea behind this book. It's got 35 new and original projects that you can try out, things for all levels of ability and things that are sure to brighten up your garden. You can pre-order it now, and as a thank you for doing so, we'll ping you over by email a free bonus chapter, and that's a bonus chapter only available to those who pre-order. Check out the link in the video description to find out more about the book and to place your order. And to sample more projects from the book, check out this video here for three more projects lifted from it that will really whet your appetite. I'll catch you next time.